In Brave New World, Huxley depicts a seemingly utopian society where technology and science have led to unparalleled happiness. However, this comes at the cost of suppressing emotions, individuality, and free will. The world state controls citizens through advanced reproductive technology, genetically engineering them for specific roles. Huxley's novel explores the dangers of sacrificing freedom and individuality for societal order, challenging readers to question the true meaning of human existence and the pursuit of shallow pleasures and uniformity. Utilitarianism, a moral theory developed by J.S. Mill, posits that the morally right action is one that maximizes happiness and minimizes suffering. This theory shifts the focus from rules or intentions to the consequences of actions. The primary aim is to promote overall well-being and enhance society's welfare, rather than individual self-interest. Central to utilitarianism is the belief that everyone's happiness holds equal value. In the face of moral dilemmas, the recommended course of action is to choose the option that leads to the highest overall happiness. Ever wondered about the meaning of life? Well, Arthur Schopenhauer has some thought-provoking insights for you. In his book, Essays and Aphorisms, he dives deep into the human condition, exploring topics like love, suffering, and the pursuit of happiness. Schopenhauer challenges conventional wisdom, urging us to question our desires and find contentment within ourselves. So, if you're ready to embark on a philosophical journey, grab a copy of Essays and Aphorisms and let Schopenhauer's wisdom guide you towards a deeper understanding of life. Have you ever wondered if we truly have free will? It's a mind-boggling question that philosopher Sam Harris dives into. He argues that our choices are influenced by factors beyond our control, like genetics and upbringing. So, are we really the masters of our own destiny? Harris suggests that our sense of free will is just an illusion. Our actions are determined by a chain of causes and effects, making them predictable. But here's the kicker, accepting this doesn't mean we lose all agency. Understanding the limits of our free will can actually empower us to make better choices. It's about being aware of our biases and taking responsibility for our actions. So, next time you face a decision, remember, it's not about having unlimited choices, but making the best ones with the knowledge we have. Food for thought, right? Hey everyone! So today I want to talk about this fascinating book called Dialogues Concerning Natural Religion by David Hume. Now Hume was an 18th century philosopher who explored the existence of God and the nature of religion through a series of dialogues between three characters. In these dialogues, Hume raises some thought-provoking questions. He challenges the traditional arguments for the existence of God, like the design argument and the cosmological argument. He questions whether we can truly know anything about God's nature or attributes. One of the characters, Cleanthes, argues that the complexity and order in the universe imply the existence of an intelligent designer. But Philo, another character, counters this by pointing out flaws in the design argument and suggesting alternative explanations. Through these dialogues, Hume encourages us to think critically about religious beliefs and to question the basis of our faith. He challenges us to consider the limits of human understanding and the role of reason in religious matters. So if you're interested in exploring the philosophy of religion and the existence of God, I highly recommend checking out Dialogues Concerning Natural Religion by David Hume. It's a thought-provoking read that will challenge your beliefs and expand your understanding. Confucius once said, the superior man is modest in his speech but exceeds in his actions. These words from the Analects have guided me throughout my life. They remind me that true greatness lies not in empty words, but in the way we live our lives. It's about being humble, yet striving for excellence in everything we do. Confucius also emphasized the importance of filial piety, respect for our parents and ancestors. This teaches us to honor our roots and appreciate the sacrifices made for us. The Analects also teach us the value of education, as Confucius believed that knowledge is the key to personal growth and societal harmony. So let us embrace these teachings, be humble in our words, honor our roots, and seek knowledge. In doing so, we can become the superior individuals that Confucius envisioned. Plato's five dialogues take us on a philosophical journey, exploring the depths of morality, justice, and the nature of the soul. In Euthyphro, we question the definition of piety. Apology reveals Socrates' defense against unjust accusations. Crito explores the duty to obey the law. Mino delves into the nature of virtue and knowledge. And in Phaedo, we contemplate the immortality of the soul. 
These dialogues challenge our beliefs, provoke critical thinking, and invite us to question the world around us. So let's dive into the profound wisdom of Plato and embark on a journey of self-discovery and enlightenment. Have you ever felt trapped by societal expectations? Like a bird with clipped wings, unable to soar freely? Well, my friend, Friedrich Nietzsche understood that all too well. In his book, Human, All Too Human, a book for free spirits, Nietzsche challenges us to break free from the chains of conformity and embrace our individuality. He reminds us that we are not bound by the opinions of others, but rather, we have the power to shape our own destiny. Nietzsche encourages us to question everything, to think critically, and to embrace our flaws and imperfections. He reminds us that it is through our struggles and hardships that we truly grow and become stronger. So, let us shed the shackles of societal norms and embrace our unique selves. Let us be free spirits, unafraid to challenge the status quo and forge our own path. Remember, my friend, you are the author of your own story. Embrace your humanity, embrace your individuality, and let your spirit soar. Imagine a world where Big Brother is always watching, where your every move is monitored, and your thoughts are controlled. Welcome to 1984, the dystopian masterpiece by George Orwell. In this chilling novel, we follow Winston Smith, a man who dares to question the oppressive regime he lives under. As he navigates a society devoid of privacy and individuality, we are forced to confront the terrifying reality of a totalitarian state. Orwell's prophetic vision of surveillance, censorship, and thought manipulation serves as a stark warning to us all. 1984 is not just a story, it's a cautionary tale that reminds us of the importance of freedom, truth, and the power of resistance. So, let's delve into this thought-provoking world and ask ourselves, could we be living in our own version of 1984? Have you ever stopped to truly experience the world around you? Maurice Merleau-Ponty's Phenomenology of Perception invites us to do just that. He challenges us to go beyond our preconceived notions and immerse ourselves in the richness of our sensory experiences. You see, perception isn't just about what we see or hear. It's about how we make sense of the world through our bodies. Our senses are intertwined, constantly interacting to create our understanding of reality. Merleau-Ponty reminds us that our bodies are not just passive observers, but active participants in the process of perception. Our movements, gestures, and even our emotions shape how we perceive the world. So, next time you're out in nature, take a moment to feel the warmth of the sun on your skin, to listen to the rustling of leaves, to smell the earth after rain. Engage all your senses and let yourself be fully present in the moment. Because when we truly embrace the phenomenology of perception, we open ourselves up to a deeper connection with the world and a richer understanding of ourselves. So go out there and experience the world with all your senses. Have you ever wondered what's essential in life that's invisible to the eye? Well, let's wander into the world of the little prince, a young boy with golden hair and a magical ability to journey across the cosmos. His story begins in the stark solitude of the Sahara Desert, where fate leads him to cross paths with an aviator, stranded and alone. The little prince, an enigmatic yet charming figure, instantly piques the aviator's curiosity. With a twinkle in his eye and a sense of wonder, he begins to share stories of his interplanetary adventures. As the sun sets and the stars appear, a unique friendship starts to blossom in this unlikely setting. Their conversations, full of riddles and wisdom, weave a bond that transcends the constraints of time and space. In the vast expanse of the desert, the little prince and the aviator embark on a journey of discovery and enlightenment. And so, their journey begins under the watchful gaze of the starlit sky. The little prince's journey isn't confined to Earth. He ventures far and wide, visiting various planets and meeting a host of unique characters. Each character symbolizes different aspects of adult behavior and societal norms, painting a vivid picture of the complexities of life. On one planet, the little prince meets a king who rules over his realm with an iron fist but has no subjects. This encounter illustrates the absurdity of power without purpose, highlighting the emptiness of authority when there's no one to govern. Next, he encounters a conceited man who craves admiration but is alone on his planet. This meeting sheds light on the futility of vanity, emphasizing that admiration without genuine relationships is meaningless. Then the little prince visits a drunkard who drinks to forget the shame of drinking. 
This encounter represents a spiraling cycle of self-destruction, demonstrating the dangers of falling into harmful patterns and the difficulty of breaking free. On another planet, he meets a businessman engrossed in counting the stars he claims to own. This character symbolizes the obsession with possessions and the illusion of ownership, challenging the value we place on material wealth. The Little Prince also meets a lamplighter who diligently lights and extinguishes a lamp, despite it being an unnecessary task. This encounter reflects the monotony of routine and the fear of change, questioning the meaning we assign to our daily tasks. Finally, the prince visits a geographer who records details about other planets but knows nothing about his own. This character represents the irony of knowledge without understanding, underscoring the importance of personal experience and self-awareness. Each of these encounters offers the little prince and us a glimpse into the various dimensions of adult life. They serve as a mirror reflecting our behaviours, societal norms, and the often overlooked complexities of our existence. Through these encounters, the Little Prince discovers the complexities of adult life, often hidden beneath the guise of simplicity. A crucial encounter on his journey is with a wise fox who shares profound wisdom about relationships. This clever, insightful creature introduces the Little Prince to the concept of taming. In the fox's terms, taming isn't about control or domination. Instead, it's about forming a bond, a connection that is unique and special, something that makes one stand out from the crowd. It's about investing time and emotion into someone or something, creating a relationship that's truly meaningful. This fox also gifts the little prince with a beautiful, timeless piece of wisdom. One sees clearly only with the heart. What is essential is invisible to the eye. This quote is a gentle reminder that not everything of value can be seen. The most significant things in life, love, friendship, understanding, they're all invisible to the naked eye, but can be felt deeply within the heart. The fox's wisdom leaves a lasting impression on the little prince, shaping his understanding of love and friendship. Once the little prince arrives on earth, he meets a single rose, symbolizing his love and the challenges of relationships. The Little Prince's encounter with the Rose is a poignant moment in his journey. This isn't just any rose, but a unique and solitary one, embodying the beauty of individuality. It's not just about the Rose's lovely petals, but also about its thorns. The thorns represent the challenges and obstacles that often accompany love and relationships, reminding us that beauty and hardship can coexist. The Rose is not just a symbol of love, but also a reflection of the fleeting nature of life. Just like a rose that blooms and withers, life too is transient. This encounter with the rose makes the prince realize the impermanence of physical beauty and the importance of appreciating the moment. But beyond this realization, the rose teaches the prince about the power of personal connections. Despite its thorns and fleeting beauty, the rose is special to the prince because it's his rose his relationship with the rose is not about ownership, but about connection and care. It's about the time he has invested in the rose, making it unique and valuable. This relationship with the rose helps the prince and us understand that it's not the grandeur or the physical beauty that makes someone or something special. Rather, it's the bonds we form, the time we invest and the love we share. The rose, with its thorns and beauty, becomes a symbol of the complexities and contradictions inherent in love and relationships. The Little Prince's journey is a mirror reflecting our own lives, filled with love, friendship, loneliness, and the pursuit of meaning. This tale of interplanetary travels is a rich tapestry of life lessons, each character the Prince meets symbolizing a different aspect of humanity. As the Prince travels from planet to planet, he encounters a series of characters all of whom teach him something about the world and himself. From the king, he learns about the absurdity of power. The conceited man teaches him about vanity. The businessman shows him the emptiness of greed and the lamplighter reveals the significance of duty. Yet, it's his relationship with the fox that imparts the most valuable lesson, the importance of human connections. The fox's words one sees clearly only with the heart. What is essential is invisible to the eye encapsulate the essence of the story. This wisdom invites us to reflect on our own relationships, to appreciate the unseen ties that bind us to those we love. 
When the prince encounters the rose, he learns about love and the challenges of relationships. The rose, unique and beautiful, symbolizes his love and the complexity of human emotions. It reminds us to cherish individuality, to value the fleeting nature of life and to recognize the significance of personal connections. The Little Prince's journey teaches us that while life is filled with complexities, it's the simple things, often invisible to the eye, that hold the most meaning. Ever felt like you're living in a world where everything is reduced to one dimension? Well, Herbert Marcuse's One Dimensional Man dives deep into the ideology of advanced industrial society, and let me tell you, it's mind-blowing. Marcuse argues that our society is trapped in a system that promotes conformity, consumerism, and a false sense of freedom. We're bombarded with advertisements, distractions, and a constant need for instant gratification. It's like we're living in a never-ending cycle of work, consume, repeat. But here's the thing, Marcuse believes that there's hope. He challenges us to break free from this one-dimensional existence, to question the status quo, and to strive for a society that values individuality, creativity, and genuine human connection. So, let's start questioning, let's start resisting, and let's start creating a world beyond the one-dimensional. Are you ready to break free? Have you ever wondered about the mysteries of the universe? Well, let me introduce you to Sophie's World by Justin Garter. This mind-bending novel takes you on a journey through the history of philosophy, unraveling the secrets of existence. From Socrates to Descartes, from Kant to Nietzsche, you'll explore profound ideas that challenge your perception of reality. But it's not just a boring textbook. Sophie, the main character, receives mysterious letters that lead her on a quest for truth. As you follow her adventures, you'll question everything you thought you knew. Prepare to be captivated by the philosophical puzzles, the ethical dilemmas, and the mind-blowing concepts that Garter presents. Sophie's World is not just a book, it's an intellectual adventure that will leave you pondering the mysteries of life. So, are you ready to dive into the depths of philosophy? Let's embark on this extraordinary journey together. Imagine a world where power lies in the hands of the people. A world where every individual has the right to life, liberty, and property. This is the vision put forth by John Locke in his second treatise of government. Locke believed that governments exist to protect these natural rights, and if they fail to do so, the people have the right to overthrow them. He argued that political power should be derived from the consent of the governed, not from divine right or force. Locke's ideas laid the foundation for modern democracy and individual freedoms. So, let's remember the importance of our rights and the power we hold as citizens. Together, we can shape a just and equitable society. Let's embrace the principles of Locke and strive for a government that truly serves the people. Have you ever wondered about the secret to a happy and fulfilling life? Well, let me introduce you to The Tao of Pooh by Benjamin Hoff. This book takes us on a journey through the wisdom of Winnie the Pooh and the ancient philosophy of Taoism. It teaches us that simplicity, patience, and living in harmony with nature are the keys to finding true happiness. Pooh, with his childlike innocence and love for honey, embodies the Taoist principles of going with the flow and embracing the present moment. Through delightful stories and charming illustrations, the Tao of Pooh reminds us to let go of our worries, embrace our true selves, and find joy in the simple things. So, if you're looking for a guide to a more peaceful and meaningful life, give the Tao of Pooh a read. It might just change your perspective on everything. Have you ever wondered what it means to live a simple, content life? Well, let me introduce you to the Tao of Pooh. In this book by Benjamin Hoff, the beloved Winnie the Pooh characters teach us valuable lessons about embracing the Taoist philosophy. Pooh, with his childlike innocence, shows us the importance of being present in the moment and finding joy in the simplest things. Eeyore, the pessimistic donkey, reminds us that accepting life's ups and downs is essential for inner peace. And Tigger, the energetic tiger, teaches us to embrace our true selves and let go of societal expectations. Through these characters, Hoff beautifully illustrates how the principles of Taoism can guide us towards a more fulfilling life. So, if you're looking for a dose of wisdom wrapped in a honey-filled adventure, dive into the Tao of Pooh and discover the secrets of living a meaningful life. Hey everyone! Today, I want to talk about a book that has had a profound impact on my understanding of freedom and the dangers of government intervention. It's called The Road to Serfdom by Friedrich A. A. Hayek. 
In this book, Hayek warns us about the dangers of central planning and the erosion of individual liberty. He argues that when governments try to control every aspect of our lives, it leads to a slippery slope towards totalitarianism. Hayek emphasizes the importance of free markets and spontaneous order. He believes that when individuals are free to make their own choices and engage in voluntary exchange, it leads to prosperity and innovation. But here's the thing, Hayek isn't just talking about economic freedom. He's talking about the freedom to think, to speak, and to live our lives without interference from an all-powerful state. The road to serfdom is a powerful reminder that freedom is not something to be taken for granted. It's something we must actively defend and protect. So, if you're interested in understanding the dangers of government overreach and the importance of individual freedom, I highly recommend reading The Road to Serfdom by Friedrich A. Hayek. It might just change the way you see the world. Hey everyone! Today, I want to talk about a groundbreaking book called A Vindication of the Rights of Woman by Mary Wollstonecraft. In this powerful work, Wollstonecraft challenges the prevailing notion that women are intellectually inferior to men. She argues that women deserve the same education and opportunities as men, emphasizing that society's progress depends on the education and empowerment of women. Wollstonecraft's ideas were radical for her time, but they laid the foundation for the feminist movement. So let's celebrate her courage and remember that gender equality is not just a women's issue, but a human rights issue. Together, we can continue the fight for equality and create a better world for all. Thanks for listening. In a world where individuality is suppressed, where the collective reigns supreme, I stand alone. I am the embodiment of my own thoughts, my own desires, my own dreams. I refuse to conform to be just another face in the crowd. I am an anthem of individualism, a symphony of freedom. Ayn Rand's anthem taught me the power of the individual, the importance of pursuing my own happiness, and the courage to defy societal norms. It is a call to break free from the chains of conformity and embrace the uniqueness that lies within each of us. So I stand tall, unapologetically myself, for I am the author of my own destiny. Join me in the anthem of individualism and let us celebrate the power of the individual, for it is in our differences that we find true greatness. The Human Condition by Hannah Arendt is a thought-provoking exploration of what it means to be human. Arendt argues that our essence lies in our ability to think and act, to engage with the world around us. She emphasizes the importance of public life, where we come together as individuals to create a shared world. But she also warns against the dangers of conformity and the loss of individuality. Arendt challenges us to question the status quo, to resist the pressures of society, and to embrace our unique perspectives. In a world that often tries to define us, Arendt reminds us that we have the power to shape our own destinies. So let's break free from the constraints of conformity and embrace our individuality. Let's think, let's act, and let's make a difference in the world. Have you ever questioned the origins of our moral values? Friedrich Nietzsche certainly did in his book on the genealogy of morals. He challenges the traditional understanding of good and evil, arguing that they are not absolute truths, but rather products of human interpretation. Nietzsche suggests that our moral values have their roots in power dynamics, with the strong imposing their values on the weak. He criticizes the morality of pity and selflessness, claiming they undermine the potential for greatness and individuality. Instead, Nietzsche encourages us to embrace our desires and passions, to create our own values based on our unique perspectives. So, next time you ponder the nature of good and evil, remember Nietzsche's call to question, to challenge, and to forge our own path towards a more authentic morality. Have you ever wondered how language shapes our understanding of knowledge? Well, let me introduce you to Michel Foucault's groundbreaking work, The Archaeology of Knowledge and the Discourse on Language. Foucault challenges traditional ideas of history and knowledge by examining the ways in which power structures influence our understanding of truth. He argues that knowledge is not a fixed entity, but rather a product of social and historical contexts. Foucault's archaeology method involves analyzing discourses, or systems of language, to uncover the underlying power dynamics at play. By studying how discourses emerge, evolve, and intersect, we can better understand how knowledge is constructed and controlled. So, next time you encounter a piece of information, ask yourself, who is speaking, and what power structures might be influencing their words. Foucault's work reminds us to critically examine the language we use and the knowledge we consume. It's a fascinating journey into the depths of human understanding. 
Hashtag Michel Foucault Hashtag Archaeology of Knowledge Hashtag Discourse on Language Hashtag Knowledge is Power Have you ever wondered what it means to be a grown-up? Well, let me tell you a story about a little prince who taught me a valuable lesson. In Antoine de saint exuperys The Little Prince, this charming character travels from planet to planet, meeting peculiar inhabitants and learning about life's true meaning. Through his encounters, he discovers that adults often prioritize material possessions and forget the importance of imagination, love, and connection. The little prince reminds us to cherish the simple things, like a sunset or a laugh with a friend. So, let's take a step back from our busy lives and embrace the childlike wonder within us. Because in the end, it's not about how many years we've lived, but how much we've truly lived. Have you ever wondered about the true meaning of life? The book Zen and the Art of Motorcycle Maintenance takes us on a journey of self-discovery and explores the importance of values. It challenges us to question our society's obsession with technology and materialism. Through the protagonist's motorcycle journey, we learn that true quality lies not just in the external world but within ourselves. It's a reminder to slow down, appreciate the present moment, and find balance in our lives. So, let's take a step back, reflect on our values, and embrace the Zen philosophy. Because in the end, it's not just about the destination, but the journey itself. Have you ever wondered what makes you well you? Douglas R. Hofstadter's book, I Am a Strange Loop, delves into the fascinating concept of self and consciousness. According to Hofstadter, our sense of self is not just a product of our physical bodies, but rather a complex pattern of information that loops back on itself. It's like a never-ending feedback loop, constantly shaping and reshaping our identity. This idea challenges the traditional notion of a fixed, unchanging self. Instead, Hofstadter argues that our sense of self is constantly evolving, influenced by our experiences, memories, and interactions with others. It's a mind-bending concept, but it offers a new perspective on what it means to be human. So next time you find yourself pondering the nature of your own existence, remember, you are not just a physical being, but a strange loop of information, constantly redefining who you are. Imagine this, you're faced with a moral dilemma, and you're desperately seeking answers. Well, that's exactly what happened to Socrates in Plato's dialogue, Euthyphro. In this thought-provoking conversation, Socrates challenges Euthyphro's definition of piety. Euthyphro claims that piety is doing what the gods love, but Socrates questions whether the gods' love for something makes it inherently pious. He asks, is something pious because the gods love it, or do the gods love it because it is pious? This dilemma forces us to question the nature of morality itself. Are moral actions determined by divine command, or is there an objective standard of morality? Euthyphro's inability to provide a satisfying answer leaves us pondering the complexities of ethics and the search for true virtue. So, next time you're faced with a moral question, remember Euthyphro's dilemma and dive deeper into the depths of moral philosophy. It's a journey worth taking. Hey, have you ever wondered about the nature of morality? Well, let me introduce you to a dialogue by Plato called Euthyphro. In this ancient text, Socrates engages in a thought-provoking conversation with Euthyphro, a religious expert. They discuss the question, is something morally good because the gods command it, or do the gods command it because it is morally good? Deep, right? This dilemma challenges our understanding of ethics and the divine. If something is good only because the gods say so, then morality becomes arbitrary. But if the gods command something because it is inherently good, then there must be a higher standard of morality beyond the gods themselves. This dialogue forces us to reflect on the foundations of our moral beliefs and consider if they are truly grounded in reason or simply based on authority. So, next time you ponder the nature of right and wrong, remember the timeless wisdom of Plato's Euthyphro. Have you ever felt like a stranger in your own life? Like you're just going through the motions, detached from the world around you? That's exactly how I felt when I read The Stranger by Albert Camus. This thought-provoking novel explores the existential crisis of its protagonist, Massault. He's a man who lives without any real purpose or emotion, simply existing. As I delve deeper into the story, I couldn't help but question the meaning of life and our place in the universe. Camus challenges us to confront the absurdity of our existence and the consequences of our actions. It's a powerful reminder to live authentically and embrace the complexities of being human. So if you're ready to dive into a philosophical journey that will make you question everything, The Stranger is a must-read. It might just change the way you see the world. Hey. 
Have you ever wondered about the birth of tragedy? Well, Friedrich Nietzsche did. In his book, The Birth of Tragedy, Nietzsche explores the origins and significance of Greek tragedy. He argues that tragedy emerged from the fusion of two opposing forces, the Apollonian and the Dionysian. The Apollonian represents order, reason, and beauty, while the Dionysian embodies chaos, passion, and ecstasy. According to Nietzsche, tragedy arises when these two forces come together in a harmonious balance. It's like a dance between control and chaos, structure and spontaneity. Nietzsche believed that tragedy was not just a form of entertainment, but a vital expression of the human spirit. It allows us to confront the harsh realities of existence and find meaning in the face of suffering. So, next time you watch a tragedy or face the challenges of life, remember Nietzsche's insights on the birth of tragedy. It's a powerful reminder of our capacity to find beauty and meaning in the midst of chaos. Have you ever wondered about the power of words? In Plato's Phaedrus, Socrates and Phaedrus engage in a riveting dialogue about the art of rhetoric. Socrates argues that true rhetoric is not about manipulating others, but about seeking truth and knowledge. He compares the soul to a charioteer, guiding the two horses of reason and passion. But beware! Socrates warns of the dangers of empty speeches and flattery, which can lead us astray. Instead, he encourages us to use our words wisely, to inspire and educate, rather than deceive. So, next time you speak, remember the wisdom of Socrates and let your words be a force for truth and enlightenment. Hey, have you ever heard of Animal Farm by George Orwell? It's a classic novel that's all about animals taking over a farm and running it themselves. But here's the twist, it's actually a powerful allegory for political systems and corruption. Each animal represents a different character or group in society, and it's a fascinating exploration of power dynamics. The pigs, led by Napoleon, start off with good intentions but end up becoming just as oppressive as the humans they overthrew. It's a chilling reminder of how power can corrupt even the noblest of intentions. Animal Farm is a must-read for anyone interested in politics, history, or just a thought-provoking story. So grab a copy and dive into this captivating tale of power, revolution, and the dangers of unchecked authority. War is not just about brute force and physical strength. It is a delicate dance of strategy and cunning. Sun Tzu, the ancient Chinese military strategist, understood this art like no other. In his timeless masterpiece, The Art of War, he reveals the secrets to victory. He teaches us that the greatest triumph is achieved without ever engaging in battle. It is about knowing your enemy, understanding their weaknesses, and exploiting them. It is about mastering the art of deception and misdirection. Sun Tzu reminds us that the key to success lies in careful planning, adaptability, and seizing opportunities. So whether you're facing a battlefield or the challenges of everyday life, remember the wisdom of Sun Tzu. Embrace the art of war and you will conquer any obstacle that comes your way. Have you ever wondered about the weight of our existence? Milan Kundera's The Unbearable Lightness of Being delves into this profound question. In this novel, Kundera explores the complexities of love, freedom, and the human condition. He challenges the idea that life is predetermined, suggesting instead that our choices give life its meaning. Kundera's characters navigate the turbulent waters of relationships, grappling with the consequences of their actions. Through his lyrical prose, he invites us to reflect on the delicate balance between lightness and heaviness in our own lives. So, next time you ponder the weight of your existence, pick up this book and let Kandera's words guide you on a journey of self-discovery. Imagine a world where our actions are guided not by personal desires or societal pressures, but by a universal moral law. Immanuel Kant, a renowned philosopher, proposed just that in his groundbreaking work, Groundwork of the Metaphysics of Morals. Kant believed that true morality lies in the intention behind our actions rather than the consequences. He argued that we should act according to principles that could be universally applied, treating every individual as an end in themselves, not merely as a means to an end. This means no lying, no cheating, and no exploiting others for personal gain. It's a radical idea, but one that challenges us to think beyond our own self-interests and consider the greater good. Kant's philosophy reminds us that our choices have a profound impact on the world around us and that true moral worth lies in doing what is right, regardless of the outcome. So, let's strive to be ethical beings, guided by reason and a commitment to treating others with dignity and respect. Kant's Groundwork of the Metaphysics of Morals is a call to action, urging us to build a world where morality reigns supreme. Will you answer the call?
Have you ever wondered what makes a great piece of literature? Well, Aristotle had some thoughts on that. In his work, Poetics, he explores the elements that make a story captivating and impactful. According to Aristotle, a good plot should have a clear beginning, middle, and end, with a well-developed structure. Characters should be relatable and have depth, evoking emotions in the audience. And let's not forget about the importance of language and style, which can elevate a story to new heights. So, the next time you're diving into a book or watching a movie, keep Aristotle's poetics in mind. It might just help you appreciate the art of storytelling even more. Have you ever pondered the meaning of life? Have you ever questioned the values and beliefs that society has imposed upon you? Well, let me introduce you to a book that will challenge your very existence. Thus Spoke Zarathustra by Friedrich Nietzsche. This philosophical masterpiece takes you on a journey of self-discovery, urging you to break free from the chains of conformity and embrace your individuality. Zarathustra, the protagonist, shares profound insights on the Ubermensch, or the Superman, a being who rises above societal norms and creates their own values. Nietzsche's powerful words will ignite a fire within you, urging you to question everything and strive for greatness. So if you're ready to embark on a transformative journey, dive into Thus Spoke Zarathustra and unlock the true potential of your existence. Are you ready to become the Superman? Have you ever questioned the very nature of your existence? Rene Descartes did. In his groundbreaking work, Meditations on First Philosophy, he embarked on a journey of doubt and skepticism. Descartes sought to strip away all preconceived notions and beliefs, leaving only what he could truly know for certain. He famously declared, I think, therefore I am. This profound statement asserts that the very act of doubting and thinking proves one's existence. Descartes believed that by doubting everything, he could find a foundation of knowledge upon which to build. He questioned the reliability of his senses, the existence of the external world, and even the existence of God. Through his meditations, Descartes aimed to establish a solid and indubitable foundation for knowledge. So, the next time you find yourself pondering the nature of reality, remember Descartes' journey of doubt and the power of critical thinking. Hey everyone! So, I just finished reading Crito by Plato, and let me tell you, it's mind-blowing. Exploding Head Picture this, Socrates is in prison, facing execution. His friend Crito comes to convince him to escape, but Socrates refuses. Why? Because he believes in the importance of following the laws of the state, even if they seem unjust. Socrates argues that by living in a society, we implicitly agree to abide by its laws. And if we disagree with a particular law, we should try to change it through peaceful means, rather than resorting to breaking it. He believes that escaping would undermine the authority of the state and set a dangerous precedent. Plus, he values the integrity of his own soul above all else. He would rather die with a clear conscience than live with the guilt of breaking the law. This got me thinking, you know? How often do we question the laws and rules that govern our lives? Are we willing to stand up for what we believe in, even if it means facing consequences? Crito raises some thought-provoking questions about the nature of justice, loyalty, and the role of the individual in society. It's definitely worth a read if you're into philosophy or just want to challenge your own beliefs. So, what do you think? Are you Team Socrates or Team Crito? Let me know in the comments. Thought Balloon Sparkles Hashtag philosophy, hashtag Plato, hashtag Crito, hashtag thought provoking, hashtag moral dilemma, hashtag Socrates, hashtag deep thoughts, hashtag questioning authority, hashtag book recommendation. Have you ever questioned the very foundations of morality and truth? Friedrich Nietzsche did just that in his groundbreaking work, Beyond Good and Evil. He challenged traditional notions of good and evil, urging us to embrace our individual perspectives. Nietzsche believed that morality is subjective, shaped by our own experiences and desires. He argued that there are no absolute truths, only interpretations. So let go of societal norms and embrace your own values. Dare to question, to challenge, and to create your own path. Nietzsche's words remind us that true freedom lies in breaking free from the chains of conventional thinking. So let's go beyond good and evil and discover our own unique truths. In the depths of my thoughts I find solace. Marcus Aurelius here, sharing my meditations with you. Life is a constant flow of challenges and uncertainties, but within ourselves lies the power to find peace. Reflect on your actions, for they shape your character. 
Embrace the present moment, for it is all we truly have. Let go of the past, for it no longer serves us. And worry not about the future, for it is beyond our control. Instead, focus on cultivating virtues like kindness, resilience, and gratitude. Remember, happiness is not found in external possessions, but in the contentment of our own minds. So, my friends, let us embark on this journey of self-discovery together. Take a moment each day to pause, breathe, and connect with your inner self. Let the wisdom of the ages guide you towards a life of tranquility and fulfillment. Meditate, my friends, and unlock the power within. Have you ever felt lost, searching for your purpose in life? I know I have. But then I discovered The Alchemist by Paulo Coelho, and it changed everything. This book is a journey of self-discovery, following the story of a young shepherd named Santiago. As he embarks on a quest to find his personal legend, he encounters obstacles, meets fascinating characters, and learns valuable life lessons. Through Santiago's journey, Qualo reminds us that our dreams are worth pursuing, no matter how impossible they may seem. The Alchemist teaches us to listen to our hearts, trust the universe, and embrace the unknown. It's a powerful reminder that our true treasure lies within us. So if you're feeling lost or in need of inspiration, pick up The Alchemist and let it guide you on your own extraordinary journey. In a world filled with chaos and uncertainty, I turn to the wisdom of Seneca, the Stoic philosopher. His book, Letters from a Stoic, has become my guiding light. Seneca reminds us that true happiness lies within ourselves, not in external circumstances. He teaches us to embrace adversity, for it is through challenges that we grow stronger. He encourages us to live in the present moment, to savor every experience, and to let go of our attachment to material possessions. Seneca's words remind me to focus on what truly matters, cultivating virtue, practicing gratitude, and finding peace within. So, let us embrace the teachings of Seneca and strive to live a life of wisdom, resilience, and tranquility. So, you want to know about The Prince by Niccolò Machiavelli? Well, let me tell you, this book is a game-changer. Machiavelli breaks down the art of politics like no one else. He's all about power, baby. He says it's better to be feared than loved. Yeah, you heard that right? He's all about being cunning, strategic, and doing whatever it takes to stay in control. Machiavelli doesn't care about being nice or moral. He's all about the end justifying the means. It's a ruthless approach, but it's fascinating to see how he dissects human nature and the dynamics of power. The Prince is a must-read for anyone interested in politics or leadership. It's like a crash course in realpolitik. So, if you're ready to dive into the mind of one of history's most controversial thinkers, grab a copy of The Prince and get ready to have your mind blown. Have you ever wondered what makes a just society? Plato, the ancient Greek philosopher, explored this question in his famous work, The Republic. He believed that a just society is one where everyone plays their part harmoniously, just like the different parts of a human body working together. According to Plato, the ideal society is ruled by philosopher kings, individuals who possess wisdom and knowledge. These philosopher kings are not motivated by power or wealth, but by the pursuit of truth and justice. They guide the society towards the greater good, ensuring that each citizen fulfills their unique role. Plato's The Republic challenges us to think about the nature of justice and the importance of a well-ordered society. So, next time you ponder about the ideal society, remember Plato's vision of philosopher kings and the harmonious cooperation of all its members. Have you ever heard of Henrietta Lacks? Well, let me tell you her incredible story. Henrietta was an African-American woman who unknowingly changed the world of medicine forever. Back in the 1950s, doctors took cells from her cervix without her consent. These cells, known as Hella cells, turned out to be mortal, meaning they could be grown and studied indefinitely. They became the foundation for countless medical breakthroughs from the polio vaccine to cancer research. But here's the catch. Henrietta and her family never knew about it. They were left in the dark for decades. This book, The Immortal Life of Henrietta Lacks by Rebecca Sklut, dives deep into the ethical questions surrounding this incredible discovery. It's a thought-provoking and eye-opening read that sheds light on the untold stories behind scientific advancements. So if you're interested in history, ethics, and the power of one woman's cells, I highly recommend checking out this book. It's a fascinating journey that will leave you questioning the boundaries of medical ethics 